Okay. Okay, it's uh, May 3rd, 2022, 7.31 p.m. Gonna call the regular meeting of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Members present, Bob Shabbat, John Tehan, Rebecca Stanowski, and myself. All right, applications to be received. Item A, PZ-22-10, zone change and concept plan approval for section 12.15.4, subsection B, strategic development zone, zero river road, MBL 34009-0A. Um, so this is just uh, for a receipt. We will be scheduling the public hearing and the application for consideration. I think we've got the time uh, so we can get it in for the next meeting uh, in May, which will be the 17th. Okay. All right, no public hearings tonight, no new business, which brings us to item F, unfinished business, item A, affordable housing plan. So, uh, we've been talking about this for a number of meetings and we've gone through a couple of different steps. We um, did the, the survey and we looked at those results um, and we started going through some potential recommendations and then we whittled them down to recommendations that we felt based on the discussion were more appropriate for Willington. In, in sort of listening to the discussion, one of the things that we decided to do, Rachel and I in talking about this was rather than basically creating a standard implementation table, which just sort of says, here's what this is, here's what, you know, whether it's important, moderately important or, or extremely important, and then the commission that should take the charge. Um, we decided to transition that a little bit into uh, something that's a more of a call to action. I know you guys talked about wanting something that was a little bit more um, firm. And so we're basically working out um, the, the eight policies and then a, a statement as to why they are significant um, to sort of explain a little bit more about it, provide more background, and then again, what the importance is. Um, and I want to share with you just a short list. I just put it on a white piece of paper so we can see it all on one page. Um, let me see. So I don't know if this is big enough. Hopefully it is. But um, these are the eight policies that sort of shook out through our discussion. A lot of the things we talked about and had interest in fleshing out will still need to and, and we'll move forward with fleshing out but as far as just the recommendations as part of the plan these were the eight that seemed to be most applicable and there's nothing that mandates that we ultimately have to make decisions on these once the plan is adopted but these are the the eight policies that will be further explored as part of that plan if that makes sense um, and so, you know, one of the ones we talked about, what the accessory dwelling units we've already talked about, we've talked a little bit about, um, soil-based zoning mm -hmm. and I actually have, um, Steve from our office doing, um, some zoning analysis on the soils that here to see what a soils-based zoning map would actually look like in Wellington. Um, we talked about some of the cottage clusters. So some of these things we're working to flesh out so that we can kind of move into the implementation process right after. But these were the, the eight policies that were most applicable. Will this go to public hearing, Mike? Yeah, so, so what we would like, and this is really your preference, because it obviously will take a little bit of time, but yes, we will hold at least one, but more than, probably more than one public hearing. Um, but what we like to do, if you're interested, is sort of send you all of this put together for you guys to review ahead of time. Um, so what we would do is send you 
sort of the draft, which, which will have the survey data, the recommendations, and then narrative, and you guys can provide comments, et cetera. And then from there, we can send that to public hearing. Okay, and, and you're gonna explain each one in detail <coughs> and what you're sending out, each of the eight recommendations. Yeah, and I can show you what kind of what it will look like. Um, it's where we have, uh, like if I show you this one here, share, new share. So for example, this is policy four, create zoning regulations for cottage clusters, incentivizing starter homes and pocket neighborhoods. So it's not, this isn't finished, but this would explain what it is and why it's important to make clear, um, not just, hey, we've decided this is great, but, but it makes the case for Willington. Um, and then, you know, we talk about the accessory dwelling units, we talk about inclusionary zoning and we talk about the USDA and CHFA um, finance supports. So try, we try to explain what it is to sort of make clear why this makes sense for Willington, not just, hey, these are things that any town in Connecticut can do. Yeah, and I, I think that that's important, just is it was important to let the public understand when uh, the town went to an open space subdivision. There was a lot of pushback about that until people understood what it was and basically how it favored, uh, you know, uh, open space. Have we done a single one, Bob? What's that? We haven't done no, a single have, one. No, no, they haven't. They haven't. So they, we never one. got a chance to test it out because we haven't built one. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, there was one, there was a subdivision planned, I think it was like 18, six, 15 or 16 uh, lots on the Halliac Road parallel to the uh, 84. And the Conservation Commission got their uh, open space cut out of that. There were two um, vernal pools that were connected right against the state forest. And it just never went forward after, you know? So it's, it was planned, they had it all laid out and it never went anywhere. Yeah, open yeah, space. Better to, if we big. actually built one to tout it, you know, so we have something well, actually concrete. Right, right. Uh, Mike, can you make sure you put somewhere in the in the write up that you're going to do on all these? Why we have to do open space? What the penalty is for not doing it? Just something so when we go to public hearing, you know, it's because you're going to have some well, people won't want to do this under any circumstances. Others will be in favor of it. It'd just be good to have that out there. Why? Well, what what yep. one of the other. One of the other things that I think is important to let everyone understand about soil-based uh, building, that the state is, that's where the state wants everybody to be. You know, I mean, Mike has laid that out for us. There's a number of these things that are in this list that are uh, state generated. And it's best for us to lay this out forward, I think, and let the state know that, yeah, we're paying attention. And now we just have to try to get the uh, Wellington public to catch up. Well, that's why we got to say why, you know, what happens if you don't do it? You know, what, what's the penalty? Yeah. People should understand that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, it's essential. I, yeah. I think that, um, you know, when, when the discussion that we had a couple of meetings ago, I think Doug mentioned it or brought it up as a, as a start about just construction costs and, and how this all fits together. And open space subdivisions are great, but they're, they're you know, not necessarily attractive to investors. To, uh, right. And so it's, right. it's not going to work. You, you'd have to incentivize it. I just ran the math. As of now, you know, at least from what I'm hearing, you the, you know, sort of the all-in cost is like $250 a square foot for construction. So if you're building a 2,000 square foot home, it's, you know, it's a half a million dollar construction cost. And that's, you know, 
So to do a development, it's just astronomical when you start figuring in infrastructure, you know, related to roads and streetlights and all these other things. The only way for that to make sense is if they can get enough density to spread those costs around. And so the traditional developments where you give everybody a two acre square and, you know, which increases your need for roads and, and other utilities, it just, it doesn't work. And, and it doesn't really work anywhere, you know, like in any of the towns that I'm in or that we're in, we're not seeing residential subdivisions, period. Um, it, yeah. It's just not, it's not where people are going now. So, that's not a bad thing. No. Um, so, so some of these options are a way to potentially increase, increase density within existing developed areas. So you're not increasing sprawl, but you're increasing your density, providing housing options, maintaining your population. Though Willington is in a circumstance where, unlike a lot of other towns, we don't have concerns about population decline like some of the other communities like Tallinn for example um, but you know we're not forcing them to go and gobble up new pieces of property and chop the whole thing up into parcels we can get that density in smaller areas which is good for the town long term without us having to you know force continued development of, of green green areas shall we say But uh, yeah, so just to, I guess, close the loop, what I'll do is we'll put all this together, um, include this information and in everything we've gone through thus far. We'll send it out to you guys and you can comment on it however you want. We can talk about it at a meeting You can send me emails, whatever. And then when we feel like we're good with the, the whole sort of approach to, together, we'll schedule out some hearings, you know, can keep it open for a couple of meetings if you want, just to give people an opportunity, post it to the town's website um, and, and make sure we get as much feedback as, as we can. Okay. Brings us to uh, item G, approval of minutes from April 5th, 2022. Mm -hmm. I move we approve the minutes from April 5th, 2022. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. H, correspondence, text amendments, Tallinn Planning and Zoning Commission. So this is just a notification. Statute says that you have to notify surrounding towns only if, if it's related to a development, the law that says you have to notify individual towns has been superseded with the requirement that we now have to send to CROG. Um, but Tolland is proposing two, two zoning text amendments related to, um, one's related to affordable housing um, and the other one is related to drive-throughs. Um, so I'm, I'm just providing it to you guys if you have, are interested in learning more or making comments, you know, formally to them, we can, can let me know. Okay. Hi, public comment. The commission will hear brief comments at this time from anyone wishing to speak. No business can be conducted here, nor can any comments be made about any items on the agenda. Anything from the public? Once more, anything from the public? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Uh, item J, staff report and discussion. A, cannabis establishments. I just wanted to put this on here mm -hmm. as a reminder, we had looked at this and um, we had gone through some regulations, which I did refer to CROG. Um, in the, in the uh, information with the agenda, I did a revision um, from the March set that we wrote, and I just added some stuff in it. Uh, it didn't change any of the approach. It didn't change what would be, uh, how this would be treated. Um, 
but it, it clarified and tightened up some of the stuff related to what would be a conditional approval. Um, so we don't yet have comments back from CROG, um, but I think that this will probably go for the a hearing for the first meeting in June. Um, and we can obviously hear from the public at that point, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that I had tightened them up a little bit and included some additional okay. language. So you're proposing okay. having a public hearing in June? Yeah, that would probably be the soonest by the time we get comments and then schedule the hearing, we can push it out, but I don't think I can move That's it up. That's fine. We might as well hear from the public, see what they think about it. It's too, May will go by quickly anyway. Mike, I thought I saw something in there that there was approval from Prague. Was that on the, the one from 331? Uh, let me see. Oh no, you're right. They were in there. I'm losing my mind. We've got so many different things that I've sent over to Krog. <laughs> yeah. So no, we do have it. So I will, I can get that schedule. Um, The uh, only other thing that I had under there was the um, the CROG Regional Planning Commission appointments. Um, so the um, Regional Planning Commission for CROG, they like to have someone to represent each town if possible. Um, so basically, if there's anybody on the PNZ here that's interested, um, then you we can submit that to um, the Board of Selectmen and they would make the appointment and you'd attend um, the Regional Planning Commission meetings um, on behalf of Willington. It looks like they're currently being held via Zoom and they're held on the third Thursdays of the month. Um, so if anybody's interested in representing Willington. I'll do it if nobody else wants it. I'm good with that, John. Yeah, it's fine. I've got way too much going on at work and everything to, to do it. Otherwise, I would. Yeah, I can swing the third Thursday. That shouldn't be a problem. Cool. OK, so I'll let um, Erica know, though she's here, but I'll let her know officially that you're going to be the representative and we can get that formalized. And then we'll, okay. we'll let Krog know. And uh, I'll I'll connect with you based on whatever I hear from them on on timing and that type of thing. Perfect. Thanks. Cool. Um, and that is, I guess, the only other thing I can mention, which I didn't have when we did the agendas, um, is that the next step and the technical term I don't I don't uh, have in front of me. Um, related to the enforcement case uh, on River Road. You took the words out of my mouth. I was going to ask. <laughs> yep. So I, I know that I, I told you what we were dealing with before, but, but getting the necessary information that the court demands to be able to confirm that a person is not a member of the military when we don't know that person was hard to, to pull down and, and took a long time. And the, the system that the military uses apparently was down or going through an upgrade. I don't know, but we've got the affidavit. Everything's filed. So I sent that to Ken. Um, so that that should be filed, which is basically um, a, con a contempt. And I want to just pull up the language so you can see. There's also a, um, a fine amount, which, you know, it, we don't necessarily know uh, what the judge will do and how everything will shake out, but just to give you a sense of what it is and to confirm that um, it's not, it's been accruing the whole time. Uh, let me see, enforcement, 331. 331, based on the filing, according to the timing, the fines that have accrued are $24,600 <laughs> based on 246 days of non-compliance. 
Well, one thing's for certain. Nothing we've done so far has had any impact whatsoever on cleaning that up when you're right yeah. by it. If well, anything, I, it's just as bad, if not worse. I did yeah. see I did see him there and they had the garage door open and they're loading some stuff into a small trailer this week during the week. Uh, so I guess I guess it was either yesterday or Sunday. Uh, so I don't know, maybe it has a, a small impact or who knows? Were they, but, were they loading up or, or offloading? <laughs> no, they were loading stuff up and it didn't make any dents because it seems like they were taking most of the stuff from out inside. So what what exactly is that? What's the business? What no, it's uh I yeah I I, I won't say what it is, but it's uh it's an accumulation of stuff for other stuff. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Um I, I was trying to talk to Ken about it and I and I said, you know, the, the thing that is the most confusing to me is that it's it's as if the stuff was delivered, you know, like airmail from a plane to the property and it just sort of dropped all over the place. It's, it's laying out. He's got lawnmowers 10 feet from the road. He's got car, like, I don't, there's no bona fide business that I have been able to identify. He doesn't carry any licenses in the state of Connecticut related to home improvement contractors, tradesmen, EMT. I mean, he's, there's nothing that, at all formally tied to that property or to the person that I've been able to to discern licenses what are those well, well there there was a business at one time because there was a sign that appears to be gone it had a name so there's clearly some sort of business being done there it just the, the two legitimate businesses moved out yep yeah so though it is always slower than everyone hopes um, we are still proceeding forward with that. And so the, the plan would be in the next, and Ken thought, but, you know, it could be about three weeks, we would then have a date and we'd go before a judge and um, he could issue a, 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 he could basically affirm the, the, the contempt. And, um, you know, then we start dealing with orders and trying to get the property cleaned up. Um, the only other two things that I would mention uh, in at the end of the year, last year, we worked with the Economic Development Commission to submit a CDIS application, which is the Connecticut Economic Development Best Practices certification, um, where we go through and we explain based on different criteria what the town has in place related to being economic and business development business friendly. We found out last week that we received a silver certification, which is actually, um, a, you know, a pretty big deal. So mm -hmm. there will be an award ceremony in sometime in June, but um, we we got notice on that. And um, the town, uh, as part of the Economic Development Commission, we submitted uh, an application to the ARPA Commission um, for small business and nonprofit grant a grant program which was approved so in the next uh week or so we hope to be making live we've got the application and criteria set to go uh small business and nonprofit grants um for wellington businesses um it's a very simple application and if they can demonstrate a loss through covid or you know they have business improvements they want to make to make their business more um, resilient or, or responsive to the current situation, whatever. Um, they'll be given a, a, a no match grant um, mm. and we've secured enough funding that I think we'll be able to probably issue grants for anyone that's gonna apply if they meet the criteria. We're pretty comfortable or confident with that. So we'll be getting that rolling pretty soon. Nice. Right. All right. Anything else, Mike? I can't think of anything at the moment. All right. Anybody else have anything before we uh, end the meeting? Yeah, I'd just like to encourage Mike to remember that, you know, it might be slow going on the corner, but the snail won the race. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
I, yeah, it's, it, you know, I drive by that thing a couple of times, you know, over and over again, and it drives me crazy, but. Um, you're, you're doing the right thing. It's, it's gotta be, absolutely. dealt with. it's gotta be dealt with. We, if we don't enforce that, what would we enforce? Yeah. Right. And, and I remind myself, you know, having been to court before on a number of different issues, it's much easier to show up to court later, but have an entire binder of stuff prepared for the judge of the violations and the photos and then martial deliveries than it is to fire drill something quickly and then have the judge ask for something that we can't provide. They could have cleaned it up any time in the last like year easily. He chose not to. 246 so, days anyhow. You know, yeah. they're, they're bringing it upon themselves. It's yeah. unfortunate. It didn't need to be this way. Yeah. It still doesn't if they turned around and did something about it. So, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think that that the owner has really any interest. And I, I think I mentioned that the property, I believe, is is starting foreclosure. Um, so, you know, I think that he's just walking away. I, I'm not sure, which is crazy because he literally just got there. But little by little. OK. All right. Anything hey, Mike, else from anyone? One, one question that I had on the on the proposed marijuana regulations, I noticed that the um, signage was limited to 18 inches by 24 inches. That seemed awfully small to me. Yeah, so um, the signage requirement, there are specific signage requirements in the state, um, in the, in the state laws that were passed back in July. Um, okay. And, and we can regulate, one of the things that the state did say is that we can regulate signage for this differently if we so choose. If the commission wants to adjust that criteria from 18 to 26 or whatever, we can make okay. those types of tweaks during the hearing without a, without a problem. Okay, it just seemed awfully small to me. It's probably more than what would be allowed by the current sign regulations if you can look at Dunks and Dollar General. Okay. <laughs> and we can illuminate it too, John. <laughs> That's right. All right. It's, uh, let's see, 7.57 p.m. Meeting adjourned. Have a good night, everyone. Night. Night.